Despite Donald Trump's iron grip on the Republican Party, his relentless avalanche of terrible cabinet nominees has reportedly strained the loyalty of key Senate Republicans, which in turn has triggered a backlash from devout MAGA loyalists. Anyone from Marjorie Taylor Greene and Charlie Kirk to Tommy Tuberville in the Senate to Elon Musk, who are publicly and privately threatening these Republicans with political consequences if they don't fall in line. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we got several clips to talk about in this video. As you know, Donald Trump's string of terrible, unqualified, controversial cabinet nominees has really sent shockwaves throughout the media. But reportedly, fingers crossed for this, it's sending shockwaves throughout the Republican Party as a whole. And we'll get into some of the reporting on this. But first, I want you to see some of the reactions from devout MAGA loyalists, starting with Marjorie Taylor Greene. And what if Senate Republicans don't confirm him? Well, then they have to deal with Donald Trump and they'll have to deal with Elon Musk and his great new PAC. So in the American people, this is a mandate. Yeah, I want to give it. So Marjorie Taylor Greene says that you're going to have to deal with Elon Musk. And we're talking about Elon Musk in a minute. Um, now, as a member of the House of Representatives, Marjorie Taylor Greene and her chamber of Congress, they play no role in cabinet confirmations. That's between the president and the Senate. But of course, the Senate will have a 53-47 Republican majority. So you would think, in theory, it would be effortless to get these nominees through. But even Marjorie Taylor Greene is aware of the reporting, which says that there may be some key defections or key holdouts, which again would surprise me, given the cultish grip that Trump has on the GOP. Again, we'll get to Elon Musk in a second, but let's talk about another elected Republican, this time in the appropriate chamber, Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama, one of the dumbest Republican senators, which is saying something when you consider the competition. This is what he had to say about the prospect of Republicans not falling in line behind the cult leader. Matt Gates get the votes in the Senate. I don't know. You're finding all the swamp creatures coming out right now. Everybody's got the, an opinion up here. But at the end of the day, President Trump was elected by an enormous vote. And he deserves a team around him that he wants. It's not us to determine that. We've got 53 votes in the Senate. We can confirm with 51. I've already seen where a couple of them says, I'm not voting for him. Wait a minute. You are not the United States of America. You have one vote in the U.S. Senate. You did not get elected president. Vote with President Trump. This is the last chance we're going to have of saving this country. And if you want to get in the way, fine. But we're going to try to get you out of the Senate, too, if you try to do that. What part? So, again, Tommy Tuberville is really, really stupid. He doesn't understand the relationship here. So the president of the United States is also not the United States of America. So he always said, he's like, you are a United States senator. You got one vote. You're not the United States of America. You're just a United States senator. Well, the president isn't the United States of America either. Certainly, the president is the most powerful and influential individual actor in government by far. But uh, he is one branch of three in government. You all are actually part of the dominant branch. Remember, the founders wanted, they intended for the Congress to be the predominant, the necessarily predominant three of the three branches. That's why it's listed first uh, in the Constitution. Article one refers to Congress, the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. They're the final hand on top. Again, in theory, think about it. The president can veto congressional legislation. That's a big check against Congress. But what can Congress do? They can override the presidential veto. In theory, Congress is always supposed to be the final hand on top. And Tommy Tuberville is part of Congress. So when he says, basically, the president should get whatever he wants, well, that's just not true. You have a constitutional duty to advise and consent, meaning if the president of the United States offers a nominee that you think is unqualified or that you think is dangerous or that any of your peers think are unqualified or dangerous, they not only have the right to say no, they have the obligation, the constitutional prerogative to say no to. So this is the dangerous part about MAGA Republicans like Tommy Tuberville, who wield enormous power as a United States senator. They don't understand their own damn jobs or the jobs of the president or the American Constitution as a whole. You see how they're cultishly devoted to Trump. Trump, get whatever he wants. You're supposed to just shut up and do what you're told. He was elected. Well, you were elected, too. Your peers were elected, too. This idea that you're supposed to forfeit your right. I mean, listen. Consider this. Merrick Garland was nominated by President Obama to replace the late conservative justice Antonin Scalia. Republicans led by Mitch McConnell prevented, Mc or excuse me, prevented Garland from even having a hearing. They didn't just vote him down, which is their right. They had the right to say, you know what, Mr. President, we don't like Merrick Garland. Pick somebody else. We're voting him down. 
they didn't even have a damn hearing, right? I would have been so much more satisfied with the outcome if they'd actually had a hearing, heard him out, and then voted no and advised the president to pick something, somebody else. But instead, they just said, no, we're not going to give you, you know, a Supreme Court uh, appointment in an election year. That was an abrogation. That was an, excuse me, an abdication of their duty. Tommy Tuberville saying, no, the Senate has to be a rubber stamp for the president of the United States. Well, Tommy, you've been serving under President Biden, a Democrat, who also won an election. Was that your thought process then, that you that the senators have an obligation to just do whatever the hell President Biden wanted? Clearly not, right? But again, that just goes to show the stunning hypocrisy of MAGA Republicans. Now let's get out of Congress and let's think about other major MAGA influencers, including the likes of Charlie Kirk and Steve Bannon. For no other reason, Donald Trump is showing that campaign promises are not just rhetoric, um, they're amen. pledges. Amen. He is restoring faith amen. in the American political system. So let's say that some of these guys fail in confirmation. That that oh, still, oh, 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 oh. no 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 zero no no chance. Okay, Can't, well then, no. then then I'm going to take your word for okay, it, Steve. Fine. I'm just saying. So look, Tulsi's going to be a lift because of the administrative state and, and, and the warmongers, right? But the the point being, she ain't going to be as big a lift as Heg, Seth Gates, and and Bobby Kennedy. You know, I, Those are world class lifts. We we, we 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 and we're working. By the way, I've been I know. I've been working on the phones of senators it's, hold for on, Gates. Hold, it's march or die. Don't you? Agree? I, I totally agree. And by the way, this this whole thing is the personnel. Hold is, Charlie texted me yesterday. And he says, "You tell them if they're vo if they're voting." Is oh, against no, they're getting these guys. Get, you want to get primaried for any reason you, you go vote against any of president. Look, President Trump, let me be blunt. He got shot in the head and then won in a landslide a couple of months later. He gets to choose who he yes, wants in his government, that's right? right. Is it, there's no question there's about no this. Question. If he wants them, they go. He, he gets the attorney general of his choosing, the second def of his choosing, the Amen. ENI uh, chief of his choosing. He earned it. He deserves Amen. it. By the way, these Senate Republicans would not have a majority if it wasn't for President Trump. We they, wouldn't have held a house. No, 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 that's right. They are only important right now in leadership because of President Trump. This is his mandate, his cabinet, his people. President Trump delivered, in 16, we delivered at all. So again, so cultish. They want the Senate and expect the Senate to be a rubber stamp, that there's nothing, that there's no limiting principle, that there's no one, that Donald Trump, he could, he could proffer literally anybody for any role, and they expect the Republicans to just rubber stamp it. So pathetic and cultish, and an attitude and a posture that they would never demand if it had been a Democrat who had been elected. And currently, again, as a reminder, there's a Democrat in the White House as we speak. And again, they take a totally different posture altogether. Uh, Lauren Windsor, we talked about, we briefly mentioned Elon Musk at the beginning. Lauren Windsor, reporter, says a senator told me that the rumor on the Hill is that Elon Musk is threatening to fund a primary challenge to any House Republican who doesn't fall in line with Trump's agenda. Now, again, that would also apply, one assumes, to Senate Republicans if they don't confirm Donald Trump's cabinet nominees. House Republicans have no particular say. But if Elon Musk sees a revolt in, among Senate Republicans, he would probably also make the same offer that, hey, I will fund, I will throw mountains of cash towards a primary opponent when your next reelection is due. This is the sort of gangster mentality that exists within the MAGA Republican Party. And yet, despite that, there's reporting the Senate Republicans are really skeptical about Matt Gates in particular. Matt Gates, the former MAGA Republican congressman who has been nominated by Donald Trump to be his attorney general. This is what Newsweek is reporting. <clears throat> Gates will need to be confirmed by a simple majority in the Senate, which will comprise 53 Republican senators to 47 aligned with the Democrats following the November 5th election. Several Senate Republicans have expressed skepticism over Gates' selection, with one saying, we need to have a serious attorney general. So. They have some specifics. Newsweek has summarized the reactions of Senate Republicans to Gates' nomination. Representative Gates was contacted for comment by Newsweek via, uh, via email on Wednesday. These are Murkowski, Alaska. She said, quote, I don't think it's a serious nomination for the attorney general. We need to have a serious attorney general, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to consider somebody that's serious. This one was not on my bingo card. Uh, Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine. Quote, I was shocked that he's been nominated. If the nomination proceeds, I'm sure there will be an extensive background check by the FBI and public hearings and a lot of questions asked. Lindsey Graham, I'm not sure why he's on there because he has been more, much more enthusiastic uh, about Matt Gates since the nomination. Uh, Joni Ernst of Iowa says Gates, quote, has his work cut out for him to be confirmed as attorney general. John Cornyn of Texas told the New York Times, quote, I'm still trying to absorb all this. I don't really know him other than his public persona. 
Marco Rubio, Florida said, I've known Matt for a very long time. We're friends. I think he'd do a very good job for the president. So clearly they can count on him, on Marco Rubio, to back Matt Gates. Uh, Katie Britt, from Republican senator from Alabama, says, I've got nothing for you, according to Alabama Public Radio. So we've already heard what Tommy Tuberville has to say. Um, so, yes, there are some Republicans who are expressing skepticism about Matt Gates. As a matter of fact, the Wall Street Journal goes further. Wall Street Journal is reporting Gates' nomination seen as doomed by some Senate Republicans. GOP lawmakers say Trump's attorney general pick will face scrutiny over sexual misconduct allegations. Senate Republicans warned that Attorney General pick Matt Gates would struggle to win the support needed for confirmation and said the close ally of President-elect Donald Trump would face intense scrutiny over his sexual misconduct allegations if he continued to seek the post. Trump can afford to lose the support of no more than three Republican senators on his most contentious picks, assuming all Democrats are opposed, in a chamber that will be split 53-47 in the new Congress. People familiar with the discussions among Senate Republicans said that far more than three of them are prepared to vote no if the matter comes to a vote. And some said there was already talk of trying to convince Trump to pull Gates or get Gates to voluntarily withdraw his name. Quote, it's simply that Matt Gates has a very long, very steep hill to cross the finish line, said Representative, excuse me, Senator Kevin Kramer of was it Nevada. And it would require the or North Dakota. Um, it would require the spending of a lot of capital. And you have to ask if you could get him across the finish line, was it worth the cross or the cost? Kramer said he didn't think Gates would have the votes to be approved by the Judiciary Committee, much less to be confirmed by the full Senate. One person familiar with conversations among Republican senators said, quote, significantly more than four, quote, end quote, of them are opposed, which would be enough to tank Gates's chances. Quote, people are pissed, the person said. Other estimates range from more than a dozen Republican no votes to more than 30. Quote, it won't even be close, another person said. So that's where we are. Now, again, I'm trying not to be too encouraged by this reporting because it would require Republicans to find their backbone, to ground themselves on principle, um, and to stand up to Donald Trump when in many ways he is more powerful than ever. Think about it. Um, he has only expanded his support despite multiple impe impeachments, 34 criminal convictions, multiple credible investigations into him, his threats to terminate the Constitution, his attempt to overthrow a, a free and fair election, his refusal com to commit to a peaceful transfer of power, the fact that he mismanaged the COVID pandemic. Despite all of that, he actually expanded his voter share. He expanded his support. And the Supreme Court of the United States says that attempts to hold him legally accountable will be even more challenging because of sweeping presidential immunity. So when Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, between presidential immunity and his own unfettered attitudes and the Republican you know, control of Congress, he's going to be the most powerful, most powerful man in the world, right? He will be more powerful than any president which preceded him because, again, unlike President Biden, you know, he's not going to be constrained by a sense of decorum and tradition. And you expect Republicans who recognize that Trump commands a cult of personality to stand up to him and potentially jeopardize their own political careers? I mean, I wouldn't bet on it. But, but, but this is somewhat encouraging reporting. And so the question becomes, will Matt Gates withdraw his name? I doubt it. Will Donald Trump withdraw his name? Possible. But it's also been reported that Trump wouldn't put the name forward if he expected that he would have to withdraw it, that he's just going to double down and double down and double down. So it's possible that Trump will, you know, eventually see the writing on the wall and, you know, come up with a, some sort of half-assed excuse as to why he needs to pull Gates' name. But I expect it's more likely that he'll just double down because there's also been reporting, as we discussed in a previous video, that Trump's whole mission is not only to gather power and to end the investigations into him, but also to break the Republican Party, to purge it of its, of its dissidents and its dissenters and totally make it in his image. So if he meets resistance, I imagine he's going to be more inclined to break that resistance rather than fold to it, which would be a blow to his vanity. So... Food for thought, but in the meantime, we see that MAGA Republicans on Trump's behalf, again, from Marjorie Taylor Greene to Elon Musk to Tommy Tuberville to Charlie Kirk, are publicly threatening uh, Republicans who intend to, or, or at least are open to not just rubber stamping Donald Trump's nominees and agenda, threatening them with political and electoral consequences if they don't fall in line cultishly. Pretty scary stuff. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.